5D Mystery School. Welcome back to 5D Mystery School. Let's get into it. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I did a video before about the Chronovisor. But you can pause to read a little informative bit. But the Chronovisor is a device that allows you to view events in the past and future timelines. And among the scientists that worked on the Chronovisor were Enrico Fermi and Warner Von Braun. Now, some of you may not know that Warner Von Braun was the head scientist over at NASA, right? And he's the guy on his tombstone has a Bible verse about the firmament. And Enrico Fermi, uh, if you don't know this, in Chicago, there is a lab called the Fermi Lab named after Enrico Fermi. And that Fermi lab is connected to CERN, right? And real quick, here is a uh, photo of the chronovisor. And this is Father Pellegrino and Rede on the right. So the chronovisor ended up at the Vatican. Fast forward to modern day times, the Vatican is connected to CERN. So I believe that CERN has some components of the chronovisor embedded within its machinery in it not only allows you to veer within the past and future timelines, but also parallel timelines. So CERN could have also borrowed some of the technology from Project Looking Glass, and Project Looking Glass was just uh, a machine that allowed you to view future timelines. So this could be why time is literally speeding up, Mandela effects happen, and the number of doppelgangers that are being noticed is increasing. I'm gonna park it here right now, but I, I'll come back to this. Timelines part two, let's get into it. So, do faster than light particles exist? Well, our reality is composed of atoms that are composed of molecular structures that at its foundation is nothing more than vibrating energy. Now, what is the vibrating energy composed of? Are there quasi-particles that make up the vibrations that keep our matter intact? Well, we know that our reality is composed of the ether. It's composed of light particles, it's composed of the electromagnetic field, and what our eyes can see of visible light and the invisible light like uh, radio waves and gamma waves. But there's also another factor that makes up our reality, and that is the quantum field. We know the particles that make up the electromagnetic field, but the particles that make up the quantum field are yet to be fully um, studied. Well, we know that the ether comes from chaos, right? And chaos is darkness. And we know that chronos or time has the same origin. So with this being said, then you can postulate that there are quasi particles or subatomic particles that make up the force that we know as time. This comes from the website STEM scholars. Tachyons, faster than light, do they really exist? All right, you can see the author here. And you just pause to read. They are particles said to travel faster than light. If tachyons exist, then for them, V is greater than C in Einstein's equation, which makes E imaginary. Tachyons have still never been found in experiments or not have been discovered practically, but it is just theoretically predicted that such particles exist as faster than light quasi-particles. Quasi-particles are like a quantum of energy in a crystal lattice or other systems of bodies which has momentum and position and can, in some respect, be regarded as a particle, much like phonons and polaritons. So I believe that these tachyons could be utilized to view past and future events since they theoretically control time. And these tachyons could also make up dark matter since they come from chaos, which is darkness, aka dark matter. So, why does this matter matter? Well, I believe these tachyon particles are literally strong components of the Earth matrix simulation that is essential to maintaining the time loop. And they can sync up with the crystals in our brains and control our perception of this force that we know as time. And these tachyon particles could be faster than the speed of light. Because if you're traveling in time using tachyon particles, then you can essentially arrive at a moment before the light reaches that moment that you are traveling to. And I believe that you can actually use tachyon particles to change the direction of light. Timelines part three, let's get into it. 
All right, so stay with me here. We have magnetite crystals in our brain, right? And those crystals act as antennas, and those antennas can receive messages from different frequencies, like an electromagnetic field or a quantum field, or it can receive messages from crystals that are embedded within the foundation of the earth. And these crystals are composed of the same material that make up computer chips. And since tachyon particles are connected to time, they can change our perception of time. All right, so quasi particles are like a quantum of energy in a crystal lattice. So a crystal lattice is just the molecular structures of this particle. Here's an example, you just have your atoms and then your bonds between those atoms. Crystals in time can be connected, right? Like crystals, the crystal lattices could be a material that time uses to exude its force. And since these crystals are everywhere embedded in our earth, these crystals could be making up the grid for the quantum field. And these crystals, when they are activated, they can change our perception of time. Crystals are literally used in time. Like here's a watch. You have your quartz crystals, you have your mechanical components, your battery, electrical components, and your coil. And with using electricity, you know that you always have to have your coil in there. And on most modern day clocks, you'll see the word quartz, meaning that clock uses a quartz crystal. All right, so I want you to keep this in mind. This is important. Crystals, they're made up of silicon dioxide. Right, and crystals, we have large crystal caves embedded deep within the earth. It's made from a chemical called silicon dioxide. Silicon is also the stuff from which computer chips are made. You can find it in sand and most types of rock. So if scientists said that they find ones and zeros embedded deep within the earth, and you have crystals embedded deep within the earth, and these crystals are made up of silicon dioxide, the same material that are used in computer chips. And those computer chips are ran off of ones and zeros, which means that the simulation is literally everywhere and you're seeing what it's made from. And then those ones and zeros make up what we know as the force of time. And the force of time uses crystal lattices. So when CERN fires up, they're working with more than the protons and electrons that we use every single day. And that's why when CERN fires up, things like this happen. Scientists say Earth is spinning faster than it has in decades. They say it's spinning because of a new wobble. CERN is activating theoretical quasi-particles that control time. Okay, since we have magnetite crystals in our brain, those magnetite crystals in our brain connect us to the electromagnetic field and the quantum field. The coarse crystal oscillates vibrates back and forth at a precise frequency exactly 32,768 times each second. The circuit counts the number of vibrations and uses them to generate regular electric pulses one per second. Now think of the same function happening with DMT dripping in our brain. And we have the magnetite crystals in our brain that receive electric pulses that make up our tangible reality that is controlled by the force of time. And if you take 32,768 divided by two, you can do it all the way down, which is going to give you zero with the remainder of one, and that is binary code. Binary code equals simulation. In a crystal lattice, the unit cell defines the smallest repeating three-dimensional structure within the material which is why crystal lattices that we see today are three-dimensional. And I want to repeat, quasi-particles are like a quantum of energy in a crystal lattice. So then, we know that matter is nothing more than vibrations that make up specific molecular structures. And those molecular structures can be held in place by sound vibrations or light vibrations. So some people were concerned that CERN would generate a black hole and they said that they would not generate a black hole. This could be true. I believe that they are generating something different. More like a wormhole to take a shortcut through space-time. And if that's the case, wherever they are making a jump, that space that they are jumping to would have a quantum entanglement with our reality. And if they activated theoretical time particles that use crystal lattices that are embedded within our entire Earth, then they could change 
the entire collective consciousness perception of time. Since collective consciousness is just nothing more than the cloud that humanity is tied to, that their consciousness is tied to, it like feeds the results from this simulation to that cloud. Basically, in a nutshell, it's the metadata of the simulation all just being funneled back to the observer. So if that's being done at CERN, a space that can utilize something like tachyon, these theoretical particles, then they can do the same thing that the Kroner Visor did and Project Looking Glass did, but take it one step further. Not only view the past and future timelines, but take a step into the past and future timelines, making a quantum leap. These changes happen and humanity just adapts and adjusts. And then our subconscious mind is indoctrinated with programming like this. Not realizing that quasi-particles and quartz crystals is literally controlling our time. Timelines part five, let's get into it. So this reality and timeline seems to be ran by light beings, especially since one of the first passages in the Bible is let there be light. And since light is more than an electromagnetic wave, this means that time is also nothing more than electromagnetic waves. Light is code, and more specifically, photons are matrix codes. And the speed of those photons create reality, aka the speed of light. And these codes have high energetic frequencies. For example, the Great Pyramid of Giza, the latitude is the same as the speed of light. Here are the coordinates for the Great Pyramid of Giza, and here are the numbers for the speed of light. Okay, so mechanical waves require a medium like air or water. So sound is a mechanical wave that can use both air and water. So this would mean that wind is also a mechanical wave that can use both the mediums of air and water. So sound waves are longitudinal waves. It has a compression and refraction. Ocean waves are transverse waves. I believe that wind also has its own wave pattern, but it moves more in a spiral. So when it comes to the topic of time, as mentioned in previous lectures, what we are witnessing is just the rotation of the sun and the moon. And are these vessels that our souls occupy are literally uh, controlled by this rotation and we vocalize that force as time. So in a way, sun rays are literal rays of time. And if you, you know, observe a clock, it looks like the sun and the numbers just represent the spot of the location of the sun during the day. And every 90 degree angle on a clock gives you like a 12, a three, a six, or a nine. So the sun moves along the ether and is ran by code. And that code is like the Fibonacci code. So this, the sequence of the sun, the code is something like one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, and so on. In the Fibonacci sequence, these numbers uh, is found all throughout nature. Here's an example with the pine cone. Here there are other examples. You have, the, you know, flowers, sunflowers, seashells, and the same thing goes for um, like melanated peoples. Our hair coil pattern. Also, in like you know, natural disasters like tornadoes and whirlpools, even down to the way your toilet flushes. So sometimes you might see wind pick up some loose trash and then that trash starts, uh, starts to spin in a circle. I believe that is the spiral that the wind pattern moves in. And it uses the medium of air to do that. So then, wind is a mechanical wave. And the ancients said that the wind came from the four corners of the earth. And wind has the same origin as Kronos, a.k.a. time. So I'm starting to wonder if wind has an effect on the way that we perceive time since sun has to move through the force of wind. Well, this is if you were to believe that the sun is underneath the firmament. Another thing I want to point out is you see that electromagnetic waves, they don't require a medium so they can travel through space, right? And the definition of space is just a period of time so they can travel through space time. And this is the reason why we see the aurora borealis, which in a way is at the center of time. But wind uses air as a medium, which means that the origin of wind would still require a source, right? Wind requires a force 
in the same way that sound requires a force. So in the same way that someone can make you sleepy, drowsy, someone can make you perceive what we call as time differently, right? Because sometimes you feel like, wait, today is moving faster or today is moving slower. Like that's a force that you feel. Time is like a force in a way. Okay, so follow me here. Since your brain literally links up with the electromagnetic field and you have a continuous strip of dimethyltryptamine throughout the day and the electromagnetic field is composed of light, then you receive what we perceive as time back as light codes. And when you stop receiving these light codes, your brain then starts to hypnotize you in the way of releasing melatonin stage one and then when you get into the REM stage it releases the dimethyltryptamine and then puts you into a altered state of consciousness it hypnotizes you in a way and then when the sun comes back you start to receive more light codes and then you rise up and then the your pineal gland stops the um, excessive drips of dimethyltryptamine back to the slow drip and then you come from the astral realm where you have the moon above you back to the physical realm where you mainly have the sun above you where you still have the moon throughout the day but then you receive the light codes as what we call as time and since the sun moves in the Fibonacci sequence this means that you receive these light codes and the Fibonacci sequence, one, one, two, two, and so on. So time, in a way, is hypnosis.